Hello, good morning, welcome to the Trails Radio Show. Thank you for joining us this Monday morning. Today, a very special guest returns, Mr. Ed Asner. Join us in a minute, thanks. Yeah, I interviewed you a few years ago, uh, probably two or three years ago, and I would like, you know, I, are you ready for this interview? We're going to talk about your book, and uh, I have a few other questions for you. Yeah. All right. What is your name? My name is Trey Olds. Trey Olds? Uh huh. T R E Y? Mm hmm. Yeah, T R E Y. And the last name is O L D S, Olds. An infamous name if I ever heard one. <laughs> Yeah, many people tell me that's a very uh, distinctive name, a show business name. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, my first question is, let's talk about your book. Uh, can you tell me and my listeners uh, about your book? It's called uh, ta- uh, Stories of... Uh, a- let's see. I'm trying to find it. Because I have the little copy here where I can. Son of a junk man. Son of a junk man. My life from the bottoms of uh, Kansas. Kansas City. Kansas City to the bright lights of Hollywood. Son of yeah. a junk man, my life. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I got. It. <laughs> you nailed it, kid. You nailed it. Okay, let's talk about that. It's your autobiography, your memoir, and it's basically uh, the story of your life from uh, from Kansas City to your start as the great uh, actor we know you today. <laughs> Thank you. Can That's it. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I failed as an actor. I could have always bounced back as a junkman. <laughs> Absolutely. When I first interviewed you, I, you know, I talked about how did you get started in your career and, uh, you know, your experiences on these many television shows, Mary Tyler Moore, Lou Grant, and you shared your advice to people, uh, how to become an actor, you know, people today who want to get into the industry. I'm My question today is for this interview, which I didn't talk about with the first interview, you were the president of the Screen Actors Guild for a time, and uh, how did you get involved with that, uh, being the president of the Screen Actors Guild? Well, I I was uh, banded with a bunch of rebels who... uh, uh, themselves kept assuming various titles and posts in the union. Mm-hmm. And finally, they uh, achieved enough power that they could swing the, the key my way. I was a name with Mary Tyler Moore at the time. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they took advantage of my name. And I ran for two terms. Mm-hmm. And this was in the 80s? The mid-80s? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you tell um, me a little bit about the Screen Actors Guild? I'm I'm not a member. I'm not really familiar with it. And maybe you can educate me and my listeners about the Screen Actors Guild. Well, it's a union. It, uh, it regulates workers and working conditions. Mm-hmm. The minimums, that is. It also covers extras, and now it covers radio actors. Mm-hmm. They're all one big union, 160,000 people. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And um, we, uh, we've hit a glitch in the road recently because a... Um, Deficiency in the pension fund was uncovered, mm-hmm. and uh, um, 
a lot of old timers in our union are going to be punished by uh, not getting their pensions. Mm -hmm. So that's raised a hell of a row now in our union. And uh, the chips haven't fallen yet as to who's responsible. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough it time for everybody. It governs stuntmen, it governs extras, it governs dancers, it governs voiceovers. Um, it, uh, it covers everything about acting. Absolutely. And do you recommend upcoming actors join the union? Do you recommend that? Should they get in? Well, the, if there's still a union when they join... Uh, they'll uh, they'll be singing for free if they don't. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. With I've interviewed a few other actors with SAG after an actor Actors Equity, and uh, yeah, they tell me all about the uh, benefits and all the workings of it, and it's a good. Um, union to be in if you want to have a successful and stable career as an actor or a, it has been up till now yeah <clears throat> yeah it's a tough uh, round for everybody these days we're in a difficult time I mean even even President Trump pays his dues mm -hmm. yeah but this too shall pass hopefully you know uh this will be better soon, all of this. Charlie. Okay, my next question, we're going to go back to the book. Where can people buy your book? Are you on Amazon, or do you have a website where people can buy your memoir, Sons of a Junk Man? On uh, most bookstores. Okay. Well, uh, excuse me. Uh, I've got the old man's guitar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've been reading your book. I Go ahead. What? I said I have a copy of your book. I've been reading it. It's a fascinating read so far. Yeah. Oh, good. What I said was, what's the weather like in Mississippi? Oh, it's humid, uh, you know, cool weather, uh, humid, uh, windy, um. Uh, Southern weather, as you can expect, you know. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from originally? I'm from the south. Uh, I'm from Louisiana. And oh, yeah, where? I'm from a little place called Buras, Louisiana. And, mm, uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, that town, it was a small town. It got wiped out uh, mostly with Hurricane Katrina back in 2005, and then I moved yeah. to... Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then uh, uh, after that I moved to this little town in Mississippi where I am at now. It's called Loosedale, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. How do you like it there? Well, you wouldn't say you didn't like it because <laughs> they turn you off. <laughs> I like but it. It's, you know, it's very... It's a little say again? Easy. Yeah, it's a very laid back uh, town, you know, and uh, not necessarily a good town to be for an actor, you know, but I do, I'm a theater actor as well, so I do stuff at community theater, and uh, there's a, the University of um, Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, um, Community College, the community college nearby, and they have a theater department, and I work with them as an actor, and... Uh, I do my radio show, you know, interviewing actors and stuff. So my career is good so far, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you belong to our union, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoy doing this. Uh, uh, I'm 20 years old and I don't, I have high functioning autism. I think I mentioned that when I first interviewed you when we talked. And uh, I've been doing this since I was 13. So I started out very young. <laughs> Oh, good. 
My next question is, and it kind of labors on the autism, uh, because you have a son with autism and you're very involved with the autism community. You have the Ed Asner Family Center, and uh, that's in California, started, correct? Started by my non autistic son and his wife. And um, I'm very proud of what they've done. Absolutely. And that is in California? That- yeah. It's in Los Angeles. Okay. That's awesome. And that's wonderful for um, individuals like yourself, sir, to uh, stand up for people with autism. I, I thank you for that. And uh, Well, I- thank my son. He had the idea, and uh, his, his wife did, one of them. But um, they're making me look good. <laughs> As you should. You should always look good. <laughs> My next question is, and I know we talked about this uh, when I first interviewed you, but this is always an important question for me, and I like my viewers to uh, hear it. What is your advice to people who want to get into the industry? to be an actor or just to be in the industry as a whole? Work with local acting groups, with, with the community theater, with the small colleges. Mm-hmm. Learn how to get on stage. Get on stage and acquaint yourself with the moves and the, the guidances of being on stage. That will uh, certainly prefer you for film and TV. And Absolutely. And I've learned, you know, uh, because I started out when I was young, not to take rejection personally when you go to auditions. You know, if you don't get the part, you don't get the part, you know. No. But it's it's been a good life, and I think it turns out nice people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actors will never bore you. <laughs> I've learned that. I've interviewed p- actors for six years now, and I, I've never been bored with interviewing them. So, <laughs> How many interviews do you do? Well, I interview a lot of people. Uh, usually I interview my, my show, is, I interview people th- uh, three uh, interviews a week. So Monday, Monday. Uh, uh, Wednesday and Friday, so three interviews a week, and uh, uh, total interviews, I really don't, probably over a hundred, it's, I can't count them all, you know, but it's been a, it's been a lot, and it's been fun, you know. Who gave you your first break? My first interview was uh, with a gentleman uh, who I knew in person, face-to-face personally, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's a radio host and a voice actor. His name's Scott Ennis, and he did, he's done uh, the voice of Scooby-Doo for many years in cartoons and movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of gave me my break. That's a hell of a job, Scott. Yeah. And I, he was my first interview, and that kind of got me out there, uh, you know. And then I started interviewing other actors, and then radio shows wanted uh, started to interview me, and uh, so it was back and forth, and uh, that's how my name kind of got started. And uh, <laughs> I don't have much of a big ego, you know. I don't let fame go to my head, you know. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I have to see how big your head is to see if you're telling the truth. (laughs) My next question is, do you have any upcoming projects or any projects you're working on now? I know with the... With the pandemic, we've been trapped. We've had performances canceled on us. And um, we've got two shows we do. One is called...